next comedian is a friend of mine. He was actually here two years ago for his first time when he was 15. And now it is two years later, and he's, I hope you're not drinking. But he's 17, and he is amazing at this point. He's only going to get better. Give it up. Please welcome Nico White. Give it up for your host, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. please. That introduction was longer than my time up here. Did you tell us your name? Nico White. And where are you from? I'm from here. I'm from Harlem, New York, born and raised. Born in St. Luke's Roosevelt down on um, 54th Street, if I'm not mistaken. My relationship with me in the stage is like... Um, I finally had the power that I always wanted, you know what I mean? I told y'all yesterday, it was something, it's something about being royalty that I'm in love with, you know what I mean? I walk around the house, I'm a king, this is my castle, I run this, this is all mine. And when I get on stage, that's actually true. I'm talking about. I love hardworking people. That's why I love the Mexicans. <laughs> Hardest working group of people on the planet. Mexicans are the only people that can sneak into this country at 4 o'clock. Have a job by 4.15, have six kids by 4.30, and at 5 o'clock, he's mowing lawns. Wepa! If you ever meet a Mexican that don't work, you'll be shocked and confused. You don't have a job. Hold on, wait, so you speak Spanish and have no job. Man, you ain't Mexican, you Puerto Rican. Get the hell out of my face. <laughs> Comedy is ther therapeutic for a lot of reasons because you get to say what you couldn't say or the things that you wanted to say that you couldn't say. And I do it all the time, you know what I mean? If, I, if something makes me mad one day at home and I get on stage, I'm going to talk about it. This story about Mayor Giuliani's daughter getting arrested for stealing makeup from Sephora. <laughs> Who gets a fuck? <laughs> The media makes it seem so psychological. Oh, it's a daughter's cry for help. When your father makes millions of dollars and you out stealing seventy-five dollars worth of makeup, you're not a psychopath. You're a stupid bitch. When I found out Nico first wanted to do comedy, Nico was cursing me out on a piece of paper that I found, and I was like, "Is he talking about me like this?" And it was like, I was like, Nico. Then he had a show, went on the stage, and he did it. We were shocked, because we never heard him tell a joke. We never heard him curse. We never heard him do none of that. We was really shocked. Yeah, I think, um, always, first of all, I got to get his name right. Sometimes I call him Nico, Nikoi. You know, I remember one time, he's like, you finally got my name right. I was like, you finally had a funny show. <laughs> no, nah, nah, I'm just joking. Uh, the, the thing that, when I first, it was so funny, because he does have a... a, a a little cockiness to him, and to be a good stand-up comic, you gotta have some that not to where it's gonna make you self-destructive or anything. But I remember the first time somebody brought him to me, and he's like, "Yo, this is Nikoi, um, uh, the young comic. You know, he's interested in going on stage." And I was doing a Monday night spot at workout room, and I was like, "You want to go on?" He was like, "Yeah." I was like, "Okay, I'm gonna bring you on first. And he was like, "Oh no, I don't want to go first. And I was like, "Well, then you don't want to go on." This is my final year in high school. As of June, I will be out of high school. I want to commit one whole year to doing stand-up comedy. Now, after doing it with school and doing pretty good, I do like, and this is a raw estimate, I do probably about 200 shows damn near a year. I want to see if I can make that more. I want to see if I can break into some of these clubs in here. I want to see if I can get some roles, some movie roles, some commercial roles. Yeah. And if I, could, if I could do what I do now, and I'm distracted, think about what I could do in a year of just going hard. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's easy to say I don't want to go to college, but then if you say, if you don't have no reason why, I just don't want to go to college, but he said I want to go to college because I really want to work at this. You know, I always believe that educating yourself first is first and foremost, but also there are those people that don't take that route. It takes a different. It takes a different person. I'm. I'm not suggesting this for everybody, but it takes a special person to say, you know what? I'm so funny and I'm so good. 
I don't need college as a backup. And now this is coming from a, a artist that was like, go hard or go home. You know what I'm saying? Um, Nick Cannon didn't go to college. Uh, Dave Chappelle didn't go to college. Actually, I know that Nico said, Mommy, I'm going to school for 12 years, okay? And don't get me wrong, he, he, he's been a good kid, good, good grades, you know? So if he want to do it for a year, I'll let him. But he must go to school. If it was my son, I would definitely suggest going to school and maybe try to uh, take theater or something like that. You know, I would say, you know, go to school, but your concentration be into the field of entertainment. You know what I mean? So that it can enhance whatever you're doing. I wouldn't say don't go to college. But if he felt that strongly, and then if I saw that he really had some true potential to do it, I wouldn't discourage it. All right. Well, let me go in here and see what the spot's looking like. Hold on, wait for, wait for me out here. I'll let y'all know what they say, all right? I'll be right back. Well, your friends and neighbors, I just got bumped until tomorrow to doing the show. When I say bumped, I mean I got pushed back. So I won't be doing the show tonight. I'll be doing the 1015 tomorrow evening. Who you got bumped for? David Tell and Donnell Rollins. Well, um, the next move is um, sit and hang out. Maybe I might get a spot, you know what I mean? Because it does happen. If somebody shows up late or in case they need a filler, they know I'm here. Right before I go on, you gotta be as you gotta be better than the dude that went before you, and just as memorable as the dude that goes after you. That's the first thing I think. I don't give a damn who's going before me or who's going after me. I have to be just as good. When you leave, you have to say Nico White was the best person I've seen this evening, and that's just how I am in my head. I've always been that. If I'm not the best, something is something is wrong. You know what I mean? That's how I feel internally about it. I feel good, I feel good. Um, before every performance, I get a little nervous, you know what I mean? Not anymore, not anymore. I remember I used to, that shit used to scare me the hell out of me. Even when I met some, um, some of the comedians that helped me out along the way, when I met them, I was um, a little afraid to go on. Yeah! Have a good one. Give it up for your host, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. please. Uh, round applause for the people in here that believe in safe sex. Safe sex. This is the nastiest audience on the planet. No, but I can understand why you may not have clapped, because if you watch the STD commercials, you would think herpes is the thing to have. You ever seen this commercial? This white woman is running through fields of flowers, smiling. <laughs> Talking about, I have genital herpes. <laughs> and then her partner walked back, and I don't. <laughs> then they meet in the middle and kiss. And we're trying to keep it that way. If my girl ever came up to me like, Nico, I got herpes. Bitch, you got what? You told me those was razor bumps. <laughs> Ten seconds later, you'll see me finishing the commercial just, hi, my wife is missing. <laughs> and I'm trying to keep it that way. <laughs> I, I think I did pretty well. I think I did pretty well. They liked me, you know.
know what I mean? And the um, reaction I got when I got on stage was pretty good. So I did very well. Very well. All right, man. This is Laugh Lounge. Different night, different day. How do you feel about this down here? I feel good. I feel good. This is one of my other home clubs, too, as a matter of fact. I kid with Africa a lot because Africa's been messing with us for a long time. In 2008, America had a Somali and Pirates incident. Now, if you don't know the Somali and Pirates, they're these little skinny Africans that took over one of our naval cargo ships. I was so embarrassed because that had been different. Those were some big, healthy, cheetah wrestling Africans. But this is a Somalian. Can you imagine getting robbed by three of these? <laughs> if three of these came up to me talking about, we're going to take over your book. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be the greatest comedian to ever do stand-up comedy. The way Richard Pryor was looked at in the 70s, the way Eddie Murphy was looked at in the 80s, and the way a lot of other comedians have been looked at from the 90s till now, I want to be one of those comedians. I don't know how many other comments can say at the age of 14, I was doing a show damn near every week. You know what I mean? I don't know how many comments can say when I was 16, I performed the Carolines and opened up for a headliner of any name. I don't know how many comments can say that and it be true. It's true for me. I've really done it. You know what I'm saying? I've probably broken records that I have no clue about. At Stand Up New York, I think I'm one of the youngest comics ever to perform there on a real show. They let me host the show there. They trusted me that much for one night when somebody was out, they called me to host the show on a weekend when they had the biggest crowd they're gonna have for the week. That means something, man, it really does. I would like to change the people that don't really wanna do this, get out of the way. There are some people that wanna be actors, so they do stand up as in to get them into acting. If you wanna be an actor, go be an actor. Go do some auditions and stuff like that to make yourself an actor. But if you don't want to, if you don't want to really be a comedian, don't be a comedian. Because all you're doing is taking up time that somebody else that's hungry could have. And then if you're going to be a comedian, do not be lazy. That's what gets on my nerves. People that start it, then don't finish it. Don't start this and then make yourself out to seem like you're going to be something. Then the people that supported you, first of all, you dropped everything they believed in you. Everything they thought you were going to be. You crushed that in them, you know what I'm saying? And you took up space for somebody else that would have wanted to do it. It's a lot of people that want to be comedians. It really is. It's thousands of us. But it's not a lot of us that really care. Some people just like, oh, I want the money. I want to be rich. I want to be famous. I can tell you, if I can do this for the rest of my life and not make a dime doing it, I swear to God, I wouldn't stop. Make it less about the greed and more about the art. That's it. My name's Nico White. Thanks so much.